If you have prior development experience, that's great. It definitely comes in handy. It's really helpful to know how to approach programming from a logical, algorithmic kind of perspective. If you have experience with Java, it makes Salesforce that much, or it makes Apex that much easier to learn because the syntax of Apex is very, very Java-like. However, um, sorry, how distracted by something on another screen. Uh, however, uh, while Apex is very Java-like, it is not Java. Java runs, as everybody says, Java runs everywhere. Apex runs only on Salesforce servers. And because it runs on Salesforce servers, it has to adhere to certain rules that apply to Salesforce as a multi-tenant architecture. One of the biggest rules that Apex has to conform to is the notion that you can't do too much work in a single transaction, a single interaction with Salesforce. So you can't write Apex code that as a result of somebody updating a rigor, a tri I'm sorry, somebody updating a record, you can't have Apex code that says, okay, right now I'm gonna go off and create a million other records because that's doing too much work in the course of a transaction. Um, Salesforce has a list of limits called governor limits that define how much work can be done in a particular transaction. And that's something that you totally have to um, pay attention to as you're writing Apex code. You have to write your Apex code in a way that's very careful not to do too much work. Another difference between Apex and Java or other environments is that while in Apex you're very often writing code that's interacting with a database, the language that you use to work with that database is not SQL. It's not the structured query language that you would use with SQL Server or Oracle or other database environments. Rather, it's a variant called SOCL, Sale or SOCL, Salesforce Object Query Language. And that query language is different as well. So right away, there are a couple of things that it really pays attention, it really um, is helpful to uh, learn about and pay attention to. One is writing code in ways that is very respectful of the multi-tenant architecture and governor limits. And the other is learning SOCL, learning how to access the Salesforce database by making queries. Once you can make those queries outside of Apex, it becomes a lot easier to deal with them inside of Apex. There's a lot to learn when you're getting going with Apex, and I didn't even try to list all of the resources here, but I did list a few key ones. One is Trailhead. There are lots of really good trails that will get you started learning Apex. There's the Apex Developer's Guide, which at this point is, what, well over a thousand pages if you pull the PDF? Um, I actually read it cover to cover when I got started, but that was a lot of years ago and it was a lot smaller. Um, it's a tough read cover to cover, but it's still a really, really good reference guide, really good descriptions um, of a lot of things. Obviously, there are a lot of blog articles, a lot of websites, a lot of help articles. The biggest way to learn is by doing. Salesforce allows you to create developer edition orgs, and even if your company has its own production org, I recommend spinning up at least one developer edition org. You can get there from a number of places, including developer.force.com. And then on the top right corner, there's something about um, getting started or creating a developer edition org. Um, if you, I, I recommend that you do that because that way you can play in a private kind of environment, more private even than a sandbox, and you don't have to worry about accidentally doing anything that might have any impact on production. A couple of suggestions, start small and start before you need to. Don't wait until your manager says, hey, can you build this really big complicated thing and then say, okay, great, I'm gonna learn Apex and dig in on that. That's not the time to be learning. The time to be learning is when you've got a couple of small ideas in your head of some small things that you could try doing. Um, gee, maybe I just wanna create my own custom address book, which you could do using standard Salesforce functionality, but since you wanna to try to learn Apex, try to think of ways that you could add programmatic automation to a particular app. So start small, try to come up with a simple use case and work on implementing that before you try to dig on, in on something that has a hard and fast deadline and that your boss is gonna be looking over your shoulder for. Especially when you are doing development for work, but even when you're working on something on your own, find a buddy, somebody who can help review your design with you and somebody who can review your code 
and somebody whose code you can review. That's uh, next to actually being hands-on, having other people give you feedback on what you've done and having you give feedback on what other people have done is probably the next best way to learn. So I really strongly recommend doing design reviews and code reviews, and that's really at any stage of your development as a developer. And finally, never, ever, ever deploy to production without during thorough testing. That includes unit testing, that includes load testing, especially when you're new, very often, and new to Apex, very often people forget about that first part about governor limits. And so they will test their little lead trigger by inserting a single lead and it works great. And they forget about the fact that, gee, somebody is gonna start inserting a thousand leads from a list and all of a sudden their trigger breaks and all hell breaks, breaks loose. So never ever deploy to production without doing thorough testing, without having thorough unit tests that you can write in Apex and without also doing load testing. Those are my suggestions for getting started with Apex. Jason, do you have any others? Uh, the testing is probably the biggest part. Um, you can really do some damage in a production org if you're not careful. Definitely. Um, I guess one last bit, and this is something that sadly I've seen in a couple of orgs. Salesforce has a rule that says, first of all, you cannot build code directly in production. You must build code in a sandbox and then deploy in some way or another from the sandbox to production. Um, when you um, deploy to production, you cannot deploy your code unless at least 75% of your code in every single trigger is covered by a unit test. So in addition to deploying your code, you have to write unit test code and deploy that as well. And on a few occasions, I've run into orgs where it's very clear that some intrepid developer, developer built a lot of code, went to deploy at 11 o'clock at night, realized that, oh shoot, I forgot to write unit tests. And then they wrote either horrible unit tests or took a couple of other shortcuts. And some of you may know what I mean by that, it's too much to go into, but they took shortcuts to bypass writing unit tests. Unit tests are annoying to write they're annoying when they fail, and as a developer, they are absolutely your best friend for making sure that you're, when you're deploying one thing, you're not breaking something else. So absolutely make sure that you, as you're writing your code, you're also writing unit tests that thoroughly exercise your code. That right there is going to save you from a world of headaches, especially when you're deploying at 11 o'clock at night. 